Okay, so good morning, everyone, and thank you for you being here in the audience and for the people that are following us at home. Uh, this will be a nice interview with uh, Ignacy and, and Robert about First Martian, which is a game developed in 2016 17 about life on Mars. I'm Jan Andrin Kingo, I'm a researcher of the Italian National Institute for Astrophysics in up from Nohon. And uh, we will have the opportunity to discuss about this game on Mars together with his author, Ignacy, and uh, uh, Roberto, who is a researcher from the National Institute for Astrophysics and an expert on Mars, uh, Mars research. So just to give you a brief interview, why we are here are as, uh, as in a, a play, so why we speak in a, at a game event, because uh, in particular we have a group in, uh, in our institute that is developing, is developing uh, innovative educational tool with tinkering, coding, and in particular game-based learning, and we always try to look and to search games that are, in, um, that are deeply connected with the uh, with possibility to teach the scientific and the astrophysic knowledge in particular to the young generation. And First Martian is one of them that is available on the market. And we strongly uh, encourage, to use, encourage to use this kind of game if we want to do uh, funny and, uh, and, uh, and kind of activity with, uh, with the students. In particular, we don't only look for, for games in, in the market, but we also develop games, in particular with the Game Science Research Center, that is our partner in, uh, in this talk also. And for example, we develop a similar game that is called Pixel, that you can find if you're here in, uh, in Play Modena, uh, down at the B32 stand that will be uh, for you available for all the, time, for all the duration of, of the events. But we, without going further in the introduction, just let me introduce the speaker today that we are discussing, that we will be discussing this interview. So, Ignacy uh, Tebichev, perfect. So he's a Polish game designer that is one of the most famous in, the, in Europe, but probably in the world, because he started developing in 1996 with his, uh, uh, with his, board, game, with his board game studio, the, the Portal game. A lot of interesting board games that they're putting together, and correct me if I'm wrong, the two aspects of the, of the game in the market. So the, the, the American game and the European game. So the strong connection with the thematic, with the strong mechanics that can put the thematic into work and into process. This is why we are interested in this. Mm -hmm. And he developed several games, in particular his most famous are Strongholds, Robinson Crusoe, and Detective, a modern crime history. But today we are going to speak about First Martian. As I was telling you before, is an is a game developed for is a it's a collaborative game on Mars life and Mars research. So this is the reason why I invited also Roberto Rosé, that is a researcher from uh, from Inaf, yeah, professor at the University of Bologna, and he has a master's degree in astronomy plus a PhD in electrical engineer, and he's worked from uh, ESA, the European uh, Space Agency, and uh, also in the for the space and for the physics and space paleontology institute in Rome. And his research is focused mostly on developing and data analysis of the sensor for space probes, and in particular, is one of the PI for the Marxist radar in the, in the European probe for uh, Mars, Mars Express. So this is the, is one of the experts on the Mars science that we have here in the panel. So I will not uh, give you more time. I'll start the question directly. And uh, first question is is for Ignacy. So why? First of all, why did the really set the game as first Martian on life on Mars in the research? Yeah, that was quite an uh, accident. So I had this very bizarre game called Robinson Crusoe and about being stranded on a deserted island and trying to survive. And one of my friends said, it would be cool if this is a science fiction game and you're on the unknown planet. And I said, that's a good idea. I have already a working system, Robinson Crusoe. I just read him, changed the artwork, and I have another bestseller. And uh, then things changed, obviously. And I started <clears throat> preparing for the game. At the very beginning, it was not the precise on Mars, it was just random average planet that you have to survive. Uh, but when I started doing uh, research on first, let me be very honest, first the research was reading science fiction books, not science books, science fiction books, and comic books, and some fiction movies. And the more and more I was 
heading towards the Mars theme, like uh, let's make even a smart girl planet. Mm, uh, and then you probably know it is a rabbit hole. Like uh, suddenly, from the science fiction books, I started reading more science uh, books and, and got fascinated about it. And obviously, it, uh, it was not my daytime job to be a scientist uh, like you guys. Uh, I, I'm not doing it for my life, but for these couple of months. I was really, really well educated about the map a couple of years ago, but it was my daytime job to read these books, to analyze, to go to the YouTube, to research, research something. And, uh, so I was this, uh, not scientist, but this geek who was trying to you know, dwell and learn about these things and make these things I was learning into the game. So gamify the whole process and say, oh, that is cool, let's make it into the game. And, uh, so yeah, that was... Uh, Find the big part of my life for about it was about two years, almost two years of, of designing the whole game from the start to the, to the publication of the game. And, uh, and yes, my kids, my family remember 2017, that it was on Mars. That is, that is their perception because of the, all the books, not the movies, and everything that was in the house. Thank you very much. And uh, so, Roberto, I know you had the possibility to look at the game and, uh, and see how it works. So, your impression as a researcher and uh, an expert on the on Mars, uh, of Mars research, what is your uh, your impression about this, the science in, in, in the game? Well, indeed, uh, what I found in the game, which I did not have the, first, the time to, to try and play myself, unfortunately, uh, is that um, it captures the, the, the need to uh, make a very careful use of resources, which are very limited so far from home, to accomplish the science goals. I also like the fact that it's a cooperative game rather than a competitive one. Not that there's anything wrong in competition, but I like to think that science is more like about working together rather than showing who is the boss. <laughs> but <laughs> although it's not always the case. But, uh, so I, I think it's, a, it's an interesting game and it finds a sort of balance between the complexity of actual research, which However, I'm not a, a, an expert in terms of uh, people working on the surface of another planet. I work with uh, pro automated probes, not really with, with people. But still, uh, the, the, the greatest uh, factor uh, in, in space research is the very limited availability of resources of any kind. And that's critical and that's about the game. And that's what makes it feel like it's real. Much sometimes, but uh, so you were talking and mentioned about the collaborative aspect of the game. It's one of the most brilliant uh, collaborative games that I've played so far, and it's one of the characteristics that I love more in the game. And so, how you arrived to create this collaborative game in this characteristic, for example? Why choose four players instead of any other numbers? Why these kind of uh, roles that you, that you choose? And, uh, yeah, so, so, so as I said, the basic got from Robinson Crusoe, the previous game, it was working uh, very well. And then uh, Robinson Crusoe is uh, not a fantasy, but it's like a, a fictional story about being a soldier on the desert island. Here, due to reading the book, due to reading who would be sent to the map, because uh, as you guys know much more than, than me, there has to be some particular roles, some particular competences on the planet that when you are having there this three or four or five, depending how big this team is, you have to have some particular skills in the team. And what is uh, most important, they also should overlap. So if one of the person is out of the team because of, for example, some, uh, some problem, other person can go in. So that's why I don't want to go too much details about the game because it will be super boring for you guys. But in this game, uh, these guys uh, have these two occupations, like he has a mine occupation and the secondary, like if he has a problem, then the second member can fit in. And so this is uh, how, how was, I was first reading, for example, like preparing uh, how we can double check everything. For everything, we have to have that second plan and third plan, and everything we have to be prepared. Mm, uh, so this is, uh, I learned from this book, who will be sent, and then I would, so this is the players, they will be working. And as you mentioned, the most cooperative uh, aspect, the abilities of this, because each character in the game has particular abilities, in-game abilities that they're working in, 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 in game. And for so many crazy situations that I designed in this game, as a random event that will happen and surprise players, 
this team can this players. We play three of us. We look at our abilities and we will find one of these abilities that will be useful in this situation, even though when we bought the game, we didn't think it is an important ability, or we didn't think that it would matter. And suddenly something random happened in the game, and you look one second and hey, I can fix it with, I can do it. And this is the brilliance of just by thinking, discussing, hey, we can use your ability combined with my ability, and we generate this additional resource that we have lack of, and use this brainstorming. And what, we, what I love in this game, when I play the uh, when I see people playing, is brainstorming. There is always not enough resources, there's always not enough time, there's always a random event, and we look at each other, we look at our very, very small number of resources, we look at our task, and let's figure out how you are children. And this is the brilliant of it. Yeah, I actually agree, and uh, we were testing and, and we were playing the game uh, that was spent before with, uh, with, some, with some players that arrived at, uh, at a certain point up in exactly what we're telling, we're telling you. So, they didn't have enough uh, the, enough time and enough uh, activity to do what they need to do to finish and was the last round and in, suddenly they were there struggling to do okay what we can do we didn't have enough uh, enough ability so wait a moment but i, I am there so I, I can i can do this and if i'm doing wrong i can reroll the rice i am the guy right for this and they suddenly realized that it was terrific this is exactly where time to hit yeah, that's that's great. And um, so, uh, talking, talking, talking about the the collaborative aspect. So, as uh, Ignacy mentioned, so in uh, in space in the same condition, this is something that uh, uh, the task can quite uh, explicitly, but uh, it's common for the entire research life uh, in, in in sense of collaborative aspect and, and competitive in, in competitive aspect. Yes. <laughs> well. But uh, no, not my, my idea is that this kind of game push a lot to, to be a team building, a team building mm -hmm. tool. So we can use this tool as an educational tool for uh, to teach people and let people learn how to be, uh, how to collaborate. And this is quite crucial in research. Yes, it is. And in fact, I think there is a certain lack specific skills to learn to work together in our education, at least for people of my generation, maybe younger people have, are better at that, or maybe there's a possibility to, to learn this along the way. But it's true, actually, that uh, uh, for sure, resources in research are never abundant, <laughs> unless you are somehow a friend of the Minister for Education. But um, the uh, so the, the, the problem is always to, to try and make the best use of available resources. But on my side, let's say in my role of the head of research team, the greatest difficulty is getting people to work together and, uh, and having a way to do it effectively. Um, I don't see a way in our system as it is now to incentivate uh, the people to work together, especially because we are continuously ranked and we are put against each other in terms of who publishes more, who gets the most citations, etc. So we are in a sort of Darwinian environment, but, uh, and, and which produces nothing. Because actually the reason why we finally succeeded in finding water on Mars was precisely because the Italian environment, in spite of its many problems and deficiencies, is less Darwinian than the American one. So, whereas Mars is, as an experiment, had a team made in equal numbers by Italians and Americans, uh, and Americans were much more competent than us, uh, because that was our first experience in space exploration way back in 1980 when I was a student. Uh, but um, the problem was that eventually they, uh, let's say, um, since they were not producing as many papers as they were used to at the beginning, they were much better at that than we than us. They uh, started getting cuts from us. So eventually, the, tie, the, the the American side of the team was slashed. And instead, we, because we get the tenure, because, well, there's little money, but at least it's always the same, or there is much more inertia in Italy in changing things, that can be said for sure. Um, you, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> but uh, we had the time, 
to think and find a solution. But now research as managed by bureaucrats as it is now, it's only quantitative, it's only measured by the numbers of the, the H index and all these measures of how often your research, the research gets cited and people are evaluated on this basis. There's not the time to do the real difficult things. We could do it simply because the system ignored that for a while. But in the United States, they are more efficient. They keep a closer track on what happens to researchers. Hmm, this experiment is not producing big results anymore. Slash it. And that's why we got it. We got them to the result and they did in, in the essence. Okay, of course, there are other factors. But, and yeah, I mean, I doubt that the Minister for Research of any country would like to play first Martians to learn that, in fact, science needs to be cooperative. <laughs> it would be a big result if it did. <laughs> that, that's a good for, for sure. And uh, so the collaboration uh, in, in the games uh, is not affected by the stress. I mean, the stress is an important role in, in, in the game, as, as you design it. But it's not a blinking light that is always on your shoulder telling you, okay, if we don't do this, everything crashes. So, yes, we have the problem. The game tells us that we have the problem, but we have all the time to manage it without any rush. It's not a rush against time. It's, it's okay. It's a rush against the problem, but not the... We can take all the time to solve it. It can be 10 minutes to one hour each round. No one is telling us to do that. And... Uh, Somehow, at the end, you arrive to manage, not so manage, <laughs> the problem in the game and go on without the, the pressure of that. Sometimes in research, we have that, as you, uh, uh, as you said. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, since we are talking about human activity, human, human collaboration, now a uh, little things change it, and there is a, a role more that's especially when we go in, in space, it's taking account of this AI. So, so both of you, why you didn't put in, in, in the game, and if you think that can, could it be something uh, interesting to have, and what can be AI in, uh, in science in, in that period? Well, uh, you want to start? No. Oh. <laughs> yeah, when, when you are alone in space and your life depends on the machinery, and you have an, an artificial intelligence as well. Of course, you are always afraid of hearing, I'm sorry, <laughs> but <laughs> that's my first concern about artificial intelligence. But, uh, well, there are people, I mean, artificial intelligence is now being used in the stock market to maximize profit. And someone says uh, the nuclear war will be started by an artificial intelligence trying to maximize profit from stocks, from weapon, uh, let's say, weapon factories. And um, artificial intelligence by itself is quite blind, but it does very well a lot of tasks that people find too boring to do, like sifting through zillions of data that you really have to observe. And we are trying to do something with that. Okay, I'm sort of old school in the sense that I have no practical training in techniques like deep learning, artificial intelligence, and similar things. But as, as a, an amateur in this respect, I'm learning to appreciate the fact that indeed these techniques can be powerful, but they are not a substitute for thinking, not yet for sure. And they will not be so for the near future. But the capability to analyze a lot of information quickly once you train you the artificial intelligence and have the possibility to find what you look for in a time that is only a, a tiny fraction of what it takes if a human has to do that. This is really invaluable, that's for sure. And for me, with AI, first of all, I was already learning about the math and uh, learning about AI. I had to, you know, not go too much. So that, and on a serious note, uh, the moment when I was running the game, uh, and completely accidentally, there is the movie Martian, uh, and the, the whole spirit of this movie is human can do it. Like he will figure out uh, and and save in this him, himself. So the whole spirit of the game, by so many different rules, is we can do it. 
we are like, well, like we will improvise, we'll find solution, and this game is is a manifest of it. Can do. Uh, you mentioned the lack of resources in, in the game. And like so many situations, and you can something is broken. You can you have no spare parts, but you can fix it. But the making use of broken something less important for your life right now. Yes, yeah? so we are breaking some stuff to fix the other stuff that is super super important for you. That is something that maybe AI would not suggest, but people understand. Okay, we need to fix it right now. So let's forget about this thing. So yeah, uh, as I said, uh, in terms of the theme and the spirit, I was so much inspired by the movie. I, said, I want to make this game that we, four of us, three of us, we will figure out it. So we don't need company. It's good right. to help us with that. Uh, that's that's great message of the the spirit that as a as a human can we can uh, yeah I'm throwing bad events I'm throwing all these random things the things are collapsing malfunctions and I change players you can figure out I play this this game I know that there is always solution just think 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 and all this set of the rules have some hidden way to fix the problem just think and this is the way of playing yeah, just a follow up question that pop up in my mind right now so. The game is always giving you bad that yep. happens to them. It's a realistic or pessimistic approach? Uh, <laughs> as far as I learned, it's realistic. As far as I learned, uh, everyone uh, is prepared that you need to have all the work scenarios possible to be prepared for them. And then maybe you will be surprised. Apparently, not. There's always something bad happening. I think you've heard of Marty's law. If something can go wrong, it will. Yes. Marty was an engineer from NASA. So, you know that, you know, yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, so, moving a little bit about the, the characters itself for the game. So, something that I noticed uh, is that the game and the character are quite well balanced in terms of uh, differences and, and gender. So, it's something that took up naturally or something that you plan to, to do it. So, you yeah, use this all from, from the book. Like this is, I was actually reading and seeing and watching movies, etc. And it's like uh, we need this, this, uh, this occupation, these abilities, these jobs. So we need this kind of people. We went for the uh, female and male for different races, uh, not to make it from the white views go to the space. Like uh, we made it as it is right now. Like uh, mm, uh, I guess that if it's happening this year, this team is quite well. I hope. Yeah, I'm a um, scientist, but I did all my best to become a little bit like a friend of the scientist. <laughs> no, no, that's 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 great. So the the funny part is that we are talking about this on the panel that we are three male and white. That's all um, good. I just want someone else. We are fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely we're we are fine. <laughs> yeah, okay. The mic is from the the audience. Yeah. Uh, but um, so. These are the two extreme. The game is in good balance, and the final that is not. Uh, and uh, what is the situation in the middle in the, in in research? Where we are going? Uh, if we are going in the right direction? And... Well, of course we are, but there's always there are always problems that can throw things back. Uh, when I was first going to work in, in at the European Space Agency in '94, I was pretty proud of the fact that Italy at the time had the highest percentage of female researchers in physics than any other Western European country. Still, it was only 24%, but it was double than the United States, 12%, and three times as much as the, as the German, uh, only 8%. So I felt like, well, that's, that, this is going in the right direction. And, and it made me feel proud. However, then people voted for a certain prime minister that is notorious for spending more time in orgies than in meetings. And the situation really took several steps back. So it's something that you cannot take for granted. I think that people in the scientific community are well aware of that. There is a discussion open on this, but the solutions are not foolproof. It's very difficult because everything boils down to biases that are mostly unconscious. And I myself, unfortunately, took a test which was mostly based on association between female figures and male roles, or female roles and, and, and male figures, etc. 
and I could measure that in doing the association, my brain takes more time in connecting female roles to male figures or vice versa, rather than female typical classic or male roles to female figures and so on. So indeed, no matter how rational we think to be, the biases that inform our decisions remain. And there's no simple way to eradicate them. An example is a very famous orchestra, the Berliner Philharmonica. So until, well, maybe a decade ago, they were all, there were no female members of the orchestra. And of course, everybody in the orchestra, when they were criticized for that, say, come on, we are one of the most important cultural institutions in the world. How can you think we can be biased? Then candidates ask it to be performing, to be, uh, let's say, to be tested behind the curtain. And then suddenly women started entering in the Berliner Philharmonica. I think I got the orchestra right, but it could still be wrong. So um, there's no simple solution, there's no simple recipe. Even those people that feel the problem as urgent are biased themselves because they are part of the same culture that produces the discrimination. So it's not like the Pihar from Munchausen that is able to lift himself from water by pulling its own, its own hair. We cannot do that. And unfortunately, we will have to spend presumably generations educating ourselves. And that's, that's great. And the key, the key question, the key word is actually education. And uh, we as a enough, we, we work a lot, we do a lot about the education in general and uh, using this kind of game can be a powerful tool behind all the different activities that we do for equality and gender equality and different uh, inclusion or not diversity, not exclusion as a, as my PI that is in the ocean, like to say, <laughs> for, this, for this project, uh, the, the idea is that uh, we can uh, hold and we can uh, lead example as a, as a people that we are actually in, the, in this kind of field, in this kind of activity. And uh, if we use a game and not only to, uh, to transmit the scientific, the scientific background, but also the habits that is connected to that. So the, the people that are working on the, uh, the, cohesion, the cohesion of the team and the diversity of the team working on the different aspects, that can be probably a, a good way to, to put the seed. There are several seeds, there are several ways to, to let it grow. But as we know from the game, we need oxygen, we need energy, we need to build all of all the same things to compromise for the things that are broken on the, on the other side. But somehow we can uh, we can let the, this this field grow and uh, growing from uh, from diversity to general education. So uh, when we when we decided to look about on first Martian and uh, we decided to okay this is a good game about science it's a good game to bring in the school uh, even if it takes uh, quite some amount of time to set up and discuss and introduce, but that it's part of the fun. Sometimes for them, uh, the, the idea is, is that uh, the people that, that play there can be uh, can be a vessel for the for for the, for the knowledge that they already know that. So they is not that we are going to teach them about science in not a way that. We want to, to bring them, uh, uh, to fill them with, the, with our knowledge. It's something that they can develop by their own, and, and the game lets do that. So uh, you, need, you need to face the difficulties. And uh, my question is, when uh, you face something that is always new, because in the game that happens, right? Uh, you need to manage them, and uh, somehow you need to, uh, to compromise. Okay, uh, how how the people can actually uh, integrate their knowledge from the outside world, from the the, the different uh, the background knowledge to to the game. So how effective is something that you don't know about anything because we've never been on Mars, but we know because we work on the, on Earth, we live on Earth, 
and we can bring in the game. So we can use our background knowledge to show something that is totally outside our 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 reality. It's, it's super interesting question. And uh, when I was designing the game and when I was publishing the game, I was not realizing what you are just saying. I realized that after the game was released, what we are talking about. Uh, this mentioned earlier, Robinson Crusoe is my bestseller, reference, 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 uh, published in 12 different languages, uh, one of the biggest games I ever did. First Martian uses the same mechanism, the different theme. We got the one print run, a very big print run, I was very happy. But the game is not worldwide bestseller, and uh, Robinson Crusoe. Now, after the game is released, when I get the feedback from the players, when I get the feedback from the people who enjoy the game, and from those who didn't enjoy it, they say, when I play Robinson Crusoe, I'm on the stranded island, I know that I need to build a shelter, I need a roof, I need to I need to hunt for the animal to eat something like I know it because I know it, because I read the reason to go, I, I watch many things. Whenever it's first Martians and I have a communication then my oxygenator is dead, I don't actually know what I should do. Because I don't have any knowledge about, about that. So we found the, the game very difficult for players who came for the game just because they watched Star Wars and they thought that it'd be cool to have, you know, <laughs> Game on the map, and then the things happen, all these malfunctions, all your rover, and uh, all the items that we put in the game, like from the from the science, and they have no clue how to react. While playing Robinson Crusoe, you organically have to what to do. If the even there, there is a big heavy rain, okay, we need to be the roof. That's only. If the game in the first match says the huge storm storm is approaching the the half. Actually, I have no clue what like, we know that, okay, uh, if we cover the, uh, the solar panels, you will have a breakdown of the energy you have to prepare. They have no clue because they would start like all Star Wars and that's, that's all they need. So that was a huge, uh, not even a learning uh, problem for the players, it was enjoyment problem. Like they will lose, they get some information from the game and they didn't know what to do. So yes, yeah, this is a... Uh, Big problem if you are not a scientific nerd to play this game, to enjoy it fully. While with exactly the same game, Robinson Crusoe and Sandman Island, everybody knows how to survive somehow. So, yeah, so you, you need somehow to get a uh, hint to enter in the, in, in the, in the, in the people's mind. And, in the people and it, is, it is difficult for them to, to visualize what's happening. Like they, they, all they know is from the internet, there's a lot of sand. They, that's all they, they know, right? So, when we when they read the event, the storm is, is approaching, they see the storm like it's in the modern, but the storms of Mars are quite different. Uh, so then when they learn that the power is off and everything is really destroyed, they oh, the storm, what the hell? Like, why, why would this happen, right? So uh, there is a big, big learning curve for the players to understand the theme and understand the rules. As I said, the, I got a lot of amazing feedback for the game, uh, for the people who enjoy it and understand it. And I see that there was many people who played it and that I don't get it. And they were fine. And it's not because the game is, is bad, because it's a good game. Because they didn't understand how to enjoy it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, for, for example, the, sometimes when, uh, when I bring the, the game to the show and, and uh, let's play to the people, usually the first round is the most hostile to, to play because actually they don't know what to do and they need to. to the, uh, the transition. The first, the first one, you know, with some cool law, you just are stranded on the island. What you do, you go to the jungle to explore. We all know that. That is, you have to find a wood, find a cave, whatever. The first one, the first one, what you do? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, of course, I completely missed this point because I thought I knew what to do. That's okay. <laughs> no, and uh, so. As a scientist, that happened to us the, the same, right? So mm -hmm. we we are turning the in completely we take flat. it for granted that you, everyone knows what you guys know, right? Yeah. 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 And, <laughs> so that's that's not happening even for us because like uh, when uh, when we study, we know from uh, from A we go to B, and this is the step to go there. We know already where we want to go, but when we start to do research, maybe we know a maybe we know the starting point we don't know definitely what are the tools and we don't we don't have a clue where this is going to be so how do, how do you think started training the people from young generation using this kind of game when you slap in the face to them that they don't know actually they don't have a clue what to do in the for an hour 
and prepare them to, to the research climate can be in general. Uh, well, uh, it's true that I do not think for a moment that people would find this game difficult because of this reason. It need, it need not occur to me. So <laughs> I'm guilty of me being I also find that that game was released, that nobody knows about Mars as much as I do. Yeah, of course. Uh, <laughs> everybody thinks everybody should know the Mars meteorology. But um, so that, that, there's a problem, yeah, indeed. I, uh, yeah, there's no, not an easy solution. Uh, of course, this limits the number of people that might enjoy the game. But maybe people might be uh, prompted to try and learn more out of curiosity. Who knows? Uh, but I really don't have a, a suggestion on this. No. I, I think I would say that if you find a person who enjoys the game, this is a candidate for you to grow some pages out of the way. And that many people will be like, oh, it's too difficult, I don't get it. And they will just bail on the game. But those who play the game, just means that they have this something in the DNA that they want to learn, they want to discover, they want to spend this one hour struggling, understanding what the hell is going on, to then get this hour, to get this achievement of actually winning the game and going to the next scenario. And then also there's more, so I can learn more. And so I would say, yeah, most of the people are not ending up as a scientist, only as a fiction. And those who enjoy such a complex game are maybe candidates for you. Yeah, that's that's for sure. But like we like our our goal, at least for my for my side, is that uh, we don't let the this game play by itself. So we we there, we are there as a facilitator, as a educator, mm -hmm. while they're playing the game. Because yes, of course they would find difficulties, but. As we did, as we found it as, as the first time, we had our our supervisor, our trainer, teaching about the sciences or the game uh, at the first approach that were guiding us to find the way in uh, in this in, in this new in this new discovery. So it's it's nice that we can uh, somehow if if the game is using the smart way. With the, with the right people, you can find a way to transmit knowledge also from the facilitator to the to the players. So after a while, they can transform their their feeling at the beginning of the first uh, the first round to the satisfaction to arrive at the end without without any any help from the outside. And uh, this has, this happened a lot because. Maybe now after six years, five years that from the, from the publication, the the culture about life on Mars it's quite grown in the community. Yeah. Also, because as you said about the, the movie, The Martian, there are also several other uh, other titles in the in the board games that bring the that topic is much more popular. That's for sure. So about about the the culture, the background culture in uh, life on Mars, so now that people can. Quite a, quite a bit start to to know have a background knowledge about this and enjoy it into the game. So we hope this will be um, great in the future. So we are quite at the end of the of our time. So I just want to ask you the last question still about space. If you are planning to do more game in space, if yes or no, and why you want to why that. At this point, I'm in a point of thinking about the vacation, like two years vacation. Ago. <laughs> so I'm not planning any game right now. Uh, but it was uh, one of the most cool moments of my life. Like it was like a huge discovery for me. For you guys, the job is a regular thing for me. I was just a regular geek who wanted to do a random science fiction game and discovered this amazing topic. I learned, uh, uh, read from the book, and it was a brilliant thing. So. If something like that happens in my life again, I'll be very, very happy. Uh, the lesson I learned as a publisher is that I overdid it. I was so excited about this topic. I was so into it. I read too many books that I overdid the theme. And many, many geeks who just wanted an average game on an average planet to have some fun, maybe meet Martians, so I don't know, shoot Martians. Like, you know, they expected an adventure cool game. They got the scientific uh, uh, a game that I'm super proud uh, and the many people enjoyed, but it was not a good recipe for the you know worldwide phenomenon such a bestseller. 
but for sure for me privately it was a brilliant moment of my life and uh, if at some point i will want again find a super interesting topic that can just be uh, and the learner will be a medical center so nothing in the world right now uh, but my memories of my of this time are very very amazing thank you very much and uh, so I don't know if maybe this is the time that you can take a question of, uh, from the other. So like now that you have a researcher working on Mars, uh, if you want to have something on uh, something for him, or you want to have something about game, uh, game and first Martin to to the altar. Uh, first, I, I would like to make a comment. And thinking of what uh, Ignacy has been saying about the. Uh, difficulties in entering into the, the, the theme of the game, because of course, uh, well, this is something that I myself find considered education. Um, of course, as Ignazi pointed out, only few people will try to cross the, the to go up the learning curve. But in the, uh, doing research is feeling inadequate most of the time. <laughs> And uh, if you're not, if you don't feel stupid, you're not doing research. <laughs> and and uh, and I think that cultivating this feeling is important because um, people doubt everything, trust nobody, but they don't really put, uh, put themselves in discussion. They they do not discuss their own belief. They discuss everything, but they maintain always their own point of view, even if it collides with facts, facts that do not match their personal belief, are erased. Here, and in science in general, it's the opposite. You, unfortunately, know that you don't know, and even if you don't like what you find out, you have to continue going on if you want to get somewhere. And this attitude would be very important nowadays. Uh, for reasons that I don't, need, I don't think I need to explain. Thank you, Rebecca. And then if you want to... I don't, I don't have any questions. I'm super proud of one second. This is like, uh, for me, back then when I was reading this book and dreaming about creating great game and uh, having the success, etc. And then the game was released. And then I got the feedback from many scientists from different parts of the world uh, uh, sending me private messages that they played my game and had a great time. And this was for me on one hand, well, I expected a um, huge uh, success in terms of the sales of the game and uh, selling thousands of copies, but having the success of me being reached by the scientist saying, dude, you did a good job, uh, thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's something that I uh, sold many other games and I earned my money anyway. And here I have in my you know, memories that I was reached by actual people who do the science and they said, take it. You did a good research, uh, good for you. And it makes me super, super proud. So I remember a moment when um, Essen third is one of the biggest European uh, game first. And I was approached by two engineers from NASA who brought me a, a NASA t-shirt, original NASA t-shirt, and they said they play my game, they loved it, and they just wanted to, in, in, in uh, as a team, that there's some, some team in, in, uh, in there, in wanted to say hello, to be with me, and give me a, a, a this t-shirt. So yeah, there are small things that make me super, super proud. And as I said, it was a great adventure to design this game. And uh, I'm very proud of what, what I did. Yeah, and we are extremely proud that you did this game and you gave us this opportunity to, to have this, this discussion. I don't know if someone from the from the audience wants to have any question. If I can. So Ignacy, now I know why you made a game about football. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot about the football. I didn't have to research that much. I was researching the football all my life. <laughs> uh, so, and for uh, Professor Roberto, uh, do you think that also uh, this game is something that could introduce researcher to gaming? I, I always heard about gaming as an instrument for something else, but also gaming is something that should be introduced to, um, to each community. Because it, of course it's an instrument, but it's also something that uh, somebody should learn. So is this game something that a researcher will approach uh, in a good way, or will you find it very difficult, and so maybe should approach with something different? 
Well, this is a big thing, and of course, I'm not the best person to talk about it.